Hi, my name is Richard and welcome. Today, we will solve Valley View University end of semester examination 2020-2021 academic year on calculus 2. This particular examination was divided into two parts, session A and session B. The session A consists of two questions where students are supposed to answer all the questions there for 40 marks. Each question carries 20 marks. The session B, which have five questions, and students are supposed to answer only three questions from there. We started by solving the questions. And we saw question one and two in session A. Then we started the session B where we solve the question three. If you have not watched that video, please check it out on YouTube. Today, before the video will end, we'll solve from question four to question seven. This will be a very interesting engagement. So please come along. Okay. The number 4e says that if cos bracket x minus y is equal to x e exponent x, show that the over the s is equal to 1 plus e exponent x bracket 1 plus s over sine x minus y. And this is worth 13 good marks. So how do we solve that? Before we solve this, I want to revise your knowledge on something. That if we have cos bracket x minus y, remember from compound angles in trig, it will be equal to cos s cos y plus sine x sine y, if you recollect very well. Then, if we have sine x minus y, remember for sine, it will be equal to sine x cos y then minus sine y cos x if you remember very well from trigonometry so we are going to use these two things to solve our equation so if we have cos x minus y equal to x e exponent x we need to expand this first Cos bracket x minus y is cos s, cos y plus sin s, sin y. So we expand and we'll get cos x cos y plus sin x sin y equal to x e exponent x. Now, how do we differentiate this? You see, this is multiplying. So we have to use product rule, and a product rule, and a product rule. To differentiate and remember the y is dependent and it's multiplying so we have to use implicit differentiation so now how do we do that we keep cos s and differentiate we keep cos s and differentiate cos y so we have cos x one differentiate cos y we we'll get negative sine y because it's the dependent we attach a dual by ds to it plus now we'll keep cos y differentiates uh, cos x. We won't differentiate cos x. We get negative sin x times our uh, cos y. That's for all this. Then plus for this, the same thing. We differentiate 1 and keep. So I'll, I'll keep sin x and differentiate sin y. So if I keep sin x and differentiate sin y, I'll get cos y because it's the dependent, we attach the value of ideas to it. Plus, now I'll keep my sine y and differentiate sine x. If I differentiate sine x, I'll get cos x. So cos x, then my sine y will be equal to, now this please, this is another product. We keep x and differentiate e of x. One differentiate e exponent x. Is the same e exponent s so that part will have x e exponent x then plus now we'll keep e exponent s and differentiate x one differentiate x is one one times that will just be e exponent x again now we need to rearrange this to look very good so we have negative cos x sine y divided by dx minus sine x 
cos y plus sin s cos y dy over dx then plus sin y I want to bring the sin first sin y cos s will be equal to x e exponent x plus e exponent x part by the group items the device together and those without device and you have those with you have the s together those without you have the s also together so i have this here i'll bring it first i have sine x cos y you have dx minus this i want to bring sine y first so i can get sine y cos x you have dx then because this is positive, I can bring down one to first plus sine y cos x minus sine x cos y. So minus sine x cos y will be equal to x e exponent x plus e exponent x. So what's common here? Do you have ideas is common? I can factor out. So I have sine x cos y minus sine y cos x divided by dx will be equal to, I want to send this there. So when I send this, it will become positive. Then this will be negative. So I have sine x cos y for this, then minus sine y cos x then plus our s e exponent x plus e exponent x okay so we reach this remember we said that sine x cos y minus sine y cos s look at this sine x cos y minus sine y cos s is sine x minus y so the whole of this we can say is sine x minus y divided by dx it will be equal to these two will be the same thing so sine x minus y plus x e exponent x plus e exponent x so i need dy by dx i'll just divide both sides so i'll say my dy over dx will be equal to sine x minus y divided by sine x minus y then plus look at this what is common here e exponent s is common so i can bring it out i'll be left with x plus one before i divide it by sine x minus y so dy over dx will be equal to when this divide is it will be one so one then plus e exponent s bracket x plus one all over sine x minus one as required what they ask us to show so we have showed that i hope you get a concept so the b aspect of question four which is worth seven marks so we should evaluate the integral of e exponent x all over the square root of 1 minus e exponent 2x dx. How do we solve this? See, we can rewrite this equation to look like 1 over the square root of 1 minus e exponent x. Look at it, all square using indices. Then e exponent x dx. Or we'll multiply this back, we'll get it again. Now, how do we do this? We'll let u to be equal to e exponent x so we'll find the u over this our d u over dx will be equal to e exponent x again we we'll won't differentiate that so we can say our d u is equal to e exponent x dx so in place of e exponent x dx we can substitute the u then in place of e exponent x we substitute u so this 
will be changed into 1 over the square root of 1 minus in place of e exponent s. So have u square, then e exponent s will be du. Now, how do we solve this? Remember how to integrate these functions. We let a variable, another variable, let's say u to be equal to this variable u to be equal to sine e because if when we're doing inverse cyclic function we say the differential sine inverse will give you this function if you remember very well so we have to let u to be equal to sine e so our a can be equal to sine inverse of u so since u is equal to sine e also, du over da is equal to cos e. Then this implies that our du is equal to cos a e. e. So in place of du, we substitute cos a d a. And in place of u, we substitute sin a. So, this will be the integral of 1 over the square root of 1 minus our u is sine a, so it's a half sine square a, then du, du is cos a da. So we reach here, we need to continue. Remember the identity connecting sine and cos. I said that sine square a plus cos square a will be equal to 1. Then what happens? You can have cos square a will be equal to 1 minus sine square a, if you remember. So our a will be equal to, uh, our cos a will be equal to the square root of 1 minus sine square a. So in place of the square root of 1 minus sine square a, we substitute cos a. So we have the integral of cos a over, in place of this, we have cos a, then da. Cos a divided by cos a is 1, so we have integral da. The integral da, remember this is just 1. If you integrate that, it will be a. So this will be equal to a plus our constant of integration. However, there is no a in this. But we know A, remember, to be sine inverse of U. So we said this, in place of A, we substitute. So we have sine inverse of U plus C. Also, we don't have U in our initial question. But U is equal to E exponent X. So we replace again. We have sine inverse of E exponent X plus C. Then we can conclude that the integral of E exponent X over the square root of 1 minus e exponent 2x dx is equal to sine inverse of e exponent x then plus c. So the number 5 is also on linear first order ordinary first order equation. It says solve the equation d over dx minus y minus s e exponent s equal to 0. So this is on linear first order or non-differential equation and it is worth 8 marks. So how do we solve that? So if you have dy over dx minus y minus s e exponent x equal to 0. We can rewrite this as dy over dx minus y equal to x e exponent x. Now to solve linear first order or non-differential equations. You need an integrating factor. And we said the integrating factor is the coefficient of the y there. So the integrating factor P of X is equal to uh, P of X from here is equal to negative 1. And we said the integrating factor U of X is equal to E, the integral of P of X dx. So I have E, the integral of negative 1 dx. How we integrate that? 
we have e exponent negative one integrate negative one we have negative x now after we find the integrating factor we need to multiply the integrating factor through the ordinary differential equation then we take it from there so now let's multiply it, the integration factor through the ordinary differential equation so we have e exponent negative x you have our dx minus y e exponent negative x equal to x e exponent x times e exponent negative x so we say after you multiply it through the left hand side of the equation will just be the product differentiation of the integrating factor and the dependent variable please check out my videos on solving linear first order ordinary differential equations so we said this will just be y e exponent negative x the differential of that and to be equal to x see this one we can use indices so we can add x to negative x so we say x plus negative x look at it why do we say is the polar differentiation if we keep e exponent negative x and differentiate y we get the y over the s then plus we keep y now and differentiate e exponent negative x when differentiate e exponent negative s you get negative one e exponent negative s so we'll get this back so we can put so on polish fed i'll get y e exponent negative s the differential of that equal to x remember when s plus negative s it will be zero then e exponent zero is one so we'll have x there now we integrate both sides so we have integral E, uh, y e exponent negative x the differential of that integral the integral of that differential equal to the integral of x dx remember we say if you dif if you integrate the differential of a function you get a function so this will just be y e exponent negative x and to be equal to or integrate x we get half x squared plus our constant now what do we do? We can divide both sides by e exponent negative x to leave the dependent variable. So we can get y equal to half e exponent and uh, half x squared over e exponent negative x plus c over e exponent negative x. So using this, we can send this one to the top and to become positive. So we'll have x squared e exponent x over our 2 plus the same thing c e exponent x then this becomes a general solution to this our differential equation i hope you get that so the b aspect of the question 5 say that find the over this if y is equal to cosh inverse of Cosec it x and this is worth 12 marks. So, how do we do this? We can solve this using chain rule again. So, let u to be equal to cosec 8x. How do we solve this? Cosec 8x. So, let again a to be equal to 8x. We find d over dx. d over dx will be equal to 8. Then u will be equal to cosec, cosec what? Cosec a. And d u over d a will be equal to. Remember the differential of cosec is negative cosec a cot a. So now we can say the differential of cosec cosec 8x will be equal to using chain rule from only this is da over dx times du over da. Please, you can do it straightforward, but for the sake of time of us, let's do this so that you get a concept. So our d over dx is 8. 
to have eight times our d over d a is negative cosec a cot a so have negative eight cosec a cot a what is a a is eight x so we have negative eight cosec eight x cot eight x so we know that the differential of cosec eight s is negative eight cosec eight s cot eight x so one u is equal to cosec eight s d over d s is negative eight cosec eight s cot eight s i've shown you how to do that so our y will be equal to cosh inverse of u in place of cosec eight s we substitute u so find d y over the u remember the differentiation of inverse hyperbolic function please check out my videos on how to differentiate inverse hyperbolic function you want to differentiate this you get one over the square root of u square minus one so from chain rule again our dy over ds which we are asked to find will be equal to du over dx times dy over du pass our d over ds du over ds is negative 8 cosec 8s cot 8x times our dy over du is 1 over the square root of u square minus 1 so what we have in our shell we we'll have negative 8 cosec 8x cot 8x all over the square root of u squared minus 1. Pass our u. u is cosec 8x. So we can substitute back. So we have negative 8 cosec 8x cot 8x. All over the square root of cosec square 8x minus 1. So we have the, we can simplify this further. Remember, we have an identity where we have 1 plus cot square s is equal to cosec square s, if you remember very well. So we can say that. 1 plus cot square 8x will be equal to cosec square 8x. So, we can make cot square 8x as a So, cot square 8x will be equal to cosec square 8x minus 1. On find the square root of both sides, we have cot 8x. Is equal to the square root of cosec square 8x minus 1. So in place of the square root of cosec square 8x minus 1, we can substitute cot 8s. That's the implication. So our dy over dx is equal to negative 8 cosec 8s cot 8x. Then in place of this. We have cot 8s. Look at this cot is a cot 8s. We divide cot 8s. Then our dy over ds in that share will be negative 8 cosec 8x. I hope, I hope you get this. I hope you, you get this. So our next question, which is on question 6. The A aspect is we should evaluate the integral of negative sine square x over cos s dx. And this is worth 30 marks. So how do we solve this? Remember this, we can, be, we can bring a negative out. We have the integral of sine square s over cos x dx. And remember, sine square s sine square s plus cos square s again is equal to 1. 
So sine squared is equal to 1 minus cos squared. So in place of sine squared, we can substitute 1 minus cos squared. So I have negative the integral of 1 minus cos squared x over cos x dx. Remember there is negative here, so I have negative the integral of we can split this and have 1 over cos s minus cos square x over cos x dx. So, we can have negative the integral of, see 1 over cos s is sec s. So, sec x minus cos square s divided by cos, cos s will be cos x, then dx. So, we can split this as the integral of sec x dx minus the integral of cos x dx. Now we know the integral of cos s to be sin s, part of the integral of sec s. We have to integrate sec s. So we reach here and we say that the differential of cos, the integral of cos is sin part of the integral of sec s. So we need to integrate that. How do we integrate? So you know this is over 1. We multiply both the numerator and denominator by sec s plus tan x. Remember that. So we have sec s bracket sec s plus tan x. So here will also be sec s plus tan x dx. Now when we, exp we expand this, we get sec square x plus sec s tan x over sec s plus tan x dx. How do we do this? We let u to be equal to sec s plus tan x. How we differentiate? Or d u over dx. On differentiate sec s. Remember, we we'll get sec s tan x. And when we differentiate tan s, we we'll get sec square x. So you can rewrite that as d u over dx is equal to sec square x. I'm bringing this one first. Plus sec s tan x. I'll make the u the subject. The u will be equal to sec square x plus sec s tan x times dx. So our du, remember, is equal to sec s square plus sec s tan x or dx. So what do we do? Uh, we we'll substitute now. So in place of sec square s plus sec s tan x dx, we substitute du. And in place of sec s plus tan x, we substitute u. So what would we have? We can say that the integral of sec s dx from there will be equal to the integral of when I substitute, I'll get 1 over u du. Because in place of sec square s plus sec s tan s ds, I'll substitute du. Du is equal to that. Then in place of sec s plus tan x, I'll substitute u. So when I integrate this, I'll get lean u plus, okay, lean u just for the integral. And what is our u? u is sec s plus tan s. So we say absolute value of sec s plus tan x. So we can say that the integral of sec s is the link of absolute value of sec s plus tan x. So we substitute it here. 
So we can say this place we have the integral of the integral of circuit ds will be lean absolute value of circuit plus tan x. Then the integral of courses will be what? That will be sin x then plus our constant of integration. We can expand this bracket. We get minus lean absolute value of circuit plus tan x then plus our sine x plus c which we can rewrite so we can say that the integral of negative sine square s over cos x dx will be equal to i can rewrite this first sine x minus lean of absolute value of sec s plus tan x then plus our constant i hope you get that so our next question, which is on which is six B worth seven marks, was on homogeneous second order ordinary differential equations. So how do we solve that? Please check out my videos on how to solve homogeneous higher order ordinary differential equations on YouTube. So we let our y to be equal to e exponent r of x. Remember that. So we differentiate this. On differentiate this, our y prime will be equal to remember how to differentiate exponential functions. We differentiate the exponent and use it to multiply the function. So we get r e exponent r of x. This x is the independent variable. Then our y prime prime again. So we differentiate this. We get r square e exponent r of x. So now, in place of y, we substitute e exponent r of s. In, in place of y prime, we substitute r e exponent r of s. And in place of y prime prime, we substitute r square e exponent r of s. So we'll get r square e exponent r of x minus 6 r e exponent r of x plus 9 e exponent r of x equal to 0. What is common? E exponent r of s is common, so we can factor out we have r square minus 6 r plus 9 e exponent r of x equal to 0. On the variable side by e exponent r, r of s, we get r square minus 6 r plus 9 equal to 0. This becomes a quadratic equation. So we solve this. Two fact the factors of 9, when we add, we get negative 6. We multiply, we get 9. That's negative 3, negative 3. So we get r squared minus 3r minus 3r plus 9 equal to 0. We factor out. What is common here? r is common. You have r minus 3. Minus 3 out. r minus 3 equal to 0. So we have r minus 3 r minus 3 equal to 0. r will be equal to 3 repeated. So we have repeated root. Remember, when we are solving a homogeneous high second order ordinary differential equation, and the root of the equation is repeated, then our general solution, our y of x, will be equal to a e exponent that 3x, then plus bx e exponent 3x, where a and b are the hot are constants. So this becomes the general solution to this our differential equation. Our, so our number 7a, which is also of 30 marks, is on, we say in a 60 degrees Faraday room, a cup of liquid cool, cools from 100 degrees Faraday to 80 degrees Faraday in 10 minutes. How much longer will it take to cool to 70 degrees far if the rate of change of temperature t with respect to time uh, the rate of change of temperature capital t with respect to time small t is proportional to t that's temperature minus the 60 degrees far the temperature in the room so this question is on newton's law of cooling however 
Newton's law of cooling is derived from differential equations. So uh, those science is from mathematics. So we we'll use differential equation to solve this because Newton's law of cooling comes from differential equation. So we say that the rate of change of temperature with respect to time, that's the T, the capital T over the uh, small T, is proportional to T minus 60. Remember that. So in the equation, they say it's proportional to that. Directly proportional. So see, 100 degrees liquid cools to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. 100 degrees Fahrenheit cools to 80 degrees Fahrenheit and that cools to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So we realize that the temperature is decreasing. So we said that the constant of proportion is negative. Then we can say that our dt the capital T over the small t will be equal to negative k bracket t minus 60. So how do we solve this? We can say the capital T is equal to negative k bracket t minus 60 d small t. We can divide both sides by t minus 60. So we can have 1 over t minus 60 d capital T we go to negative k dt. What do we do? We can integrate both sides. So we say the integral of 1 over t minus 60 d capital T will be equal to the integral of negative k dt. Where negative k is constant. is constant. So when we integrate this, we get lean t minus 60 equal to, remember the integral of this, will be negative kt plus our constant. So, when we polish that further, we have lean t minus 60 equal to negative kt plus c. And remember, lean is a, a, a log with a natural base, e. So we can say that, so this one, we can say t minus 60 is equal to e exponent negative kt plus c. So our t minus 60 will be e exponent negative kt dot e exponent c. e exponent c is a constant, so we can say it should be equal to another constant. So e exponent c should be equal to capital C. So our t minus 60 go to e exponent negative kt times c. So t minus 60 will go to c e exponent negative kt. Then we can say our t will go to c e exponent negative kt plus 60. So this is where the Newton's law of cooling came from. So now we know that the temperature at any point in time, we'll be equal to C E exponent negative K T plus C, where T is time and K is constant. So now we need to find our constant C and negative K from the information provided. Then we can answer any question. So we say the temperature at any point in time will be equal to C E exponent negative K T plus 60. So now when the temperature in the room or the liquid, if the liquid the temperature of the liquid was 60 degrees, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Time, there was no time reading. So they will say that time is zero. So we said that when T is equal to 60, uh, 100, small T is equal to zero. So we substitute that and find one of the constant. So we can say 100 will be equal to C E exponent negative K times zero plus 60. So 100 will be equal to, or can, I can bring the 100 minus 60, we equal to E exponent. Negative K times 0 is 0. So C E exponent 0. E exponent 0 is 1. So 100 minus 60 is 40. So 40 will be equal to C. So our constant C is equal to 40. 
So this differential equation, we have managed to find our C. So T of T will be equal to 40 here for negative KT plus 60. So the next thing is to find this constant T also. So we managed to find our C. We replace the C. We get T of T is equal to 40 years for negative KT plus 60. We need to find this K2. See, when a temperature reduced to, it takes to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, it, it took 10 minutes. Okay, it took 10 minutes. So they say, uh, it takes 10 minutes. So the liquid cools from 100 degrees Fahrenheit to 80 degrees Fahrenheit in 10 minutes. So we can say that when capital T was 80 degrees, the time taken was 10 minutes. So we can substitute that to, to find our key. So we can say 80 is equal to 40 years to the negative K times 10, T is 10, plus our 60. We can bring here 80 minus 60 will be equal to 40 years to the negative 10 K. 80 minus 60 is 20 we will call to 40 years for the negative 10 k. We divide both sides by 40. So we get 20 over 40 is equal to years for negative 10 k. So 40 divided by 20 is half. So we say years for negative 10 k is equal to half. How do we do this? We find lean of both sides. We say lean years for negative 10 k will be equal to lean half. So, we can drop off this. This is negative 10k using the law of logarithm. Lean E equal to lean, lean half. Lean half is negative 0 0.6931. Correct with four decimal places. Lean E, that's a base with a natural log E, so it's 1. So, we have negative 10k will be equal to negative 0 0.6931. My k will be negative 0 0.6931 over negative 10. So my k then will be 0 0.06931. So in place of k here, I'll substitute 0 0.06931 there. So now that we find our equation where we have only cut t and small t, we can be able to find an equation that is us. So the was equation they say, how much longer will it take to cool to 70 degrees Fahrenheit if the rate of change? So that's what we have found. So when t is 70, that's what they are asking. Fahrenheit. When capital T is 70, what will be our small t in that case? So we substitute this. So our 70 will be equal to 40 years for negative 0 0.06931 T plus 60. We can bring, so our 70 minus 60 will be equal to 40 years for negative 0 0.06931 T. 70 minus 60 is 10. So 10 will be equal to 40 years for negative 0 0.06931 T. We divide both sides by 40. So we have 10 over 40 will be equal to years for negative 0 0.06931 T. So we have 10 divided by 40 is 1 fourth equal to years for negative 0 0.06931 31t. What do we do? We find lean of both sides. So our lean one fourth will be equal to lean years per negative 0 0.06931t. So lean of lean one fourth is negative 1.303863 uh, equal to Remember, we can drop off this. We get negative 0 0.06931t.
So what do we find to? We divide both sides by negative 0 0.06931 here by negative 0 0.06931. This will divide that. Or you do it well. This divided by this will be 20.00014. So in actual, that means the time is 20 minutes. So we can conclude that it will take 20 minutes for the liquid to cool from 80 degrees Farah to 70 degrees Farah. I hope you get that. So we solve our last question uh, for the exams. Before we do that, remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are yet to and click on the notification bell. Your comments keep me going. Please keep your comments com coming and like my videos. The seven B say money is transferred continuously into an account at a constant rate of thousand two hundred dollars per year. The account and interest at at the annual rate of eight percent compounded continuously. How much will be in the account at the end of two years? Given that the future value of the account stream is f of t equal to thousand two hundred e exponent zero point zero eight bracket 2 minus t. Look at it. The 0 0.08 represents 8%. The 1200 is the amount transferred to the account per annum. So we can say that this future value is a change that, the change in value of the money that will come in the account. So we can say that's our dt. Maybe our differential. We can say df over dt is equal to 1200. E exponent 0 0.082 minus t. So what are they asking us to find? They are asking us to find the amount that will be in the account now. So if the future change in the account is this, then the amount that will be in the account now, we need this function back. We need to just integrate this. So we say that the future value in the account will be the integral of 1200 E exponent 0 0.08 2 minus t dt. And remember, it's for 2 years. So spanning from when we have 0 years up to the second year. So this is a definite integration. We need to solve this. Now we can polish this. So we have the integral of 0, spanning from 0 to 2. 1200 years. If 0 0.08 multiplied 2, we get 0 0.16. Then 0 0.08 times this will be negative 0 0.08 t dt. Now, we can bring this constant out. We get 1200, the integral spanning from 0 to 2. E exponent 0 0.16 minus 0 0.08 t dt. Now, how do we integrate uh, exponential functions we differentiate the exponent and use it to dif divide the function so when we integrate it we have 1200 the integral of this will just be e exponent 0 0.16 minus 0 0.08 t over on the we, di we differentiate this we'll get negative 0 0.08 so divided by negative 0. 0, 8. Then remember, this is definite integration. So from 0 to 2. See, because this negative 0 0.08 is also constant, I can bring it out. You get 1200 divided by negative 0 0.08. Then we have E exponent 0 0.16 minus 0 0.08 t. Spanning from 0 to 2. So when divide 1200 by negative 0 0.08, we we'll get negative 15,000. Then E exponent 0 0.16 minus 0 0.08 t. Spanning from 0 to 2. So remember how we solve definite integration. We substitute 2 in the place of t minus 
substitute zero. So we have negative 15,000 bracket e exponent 0 0.16 minus 0 0.08 times 2 then minus e exponent 0 0.16 minus 0 0.08 times 0 if you remember how to do definite integrations I have negative 15,000 bracket e exponent 0 0.16 0 0.08 times 2 will be 0 0.16 minus e exponent 0 0.16 then this will be 0 0 0.08 times 0 will be 0 so when we solve this way we get negative 15,000 e exponent 0 0.16 minus 0 0.16 minus 0 0.16 is 0 so e exponent 0 is 1 then e exponent 0 0.16 will be 1.1735 so we'll subtract this we okay? get the negative 15,000 multiply this will be negative negative 0 0.1735 multiply by the negative 15,000 we we'll get 2,602 cities, 66 pesos, correct to two decimal places. So you can say that the money that will be in the account will be 2,602 cities, 66 pesos. I hope you, I hope you get that. I hope you get that. We'll end it here today.